Okay, thank you, Kyung Soo. It's certainly an honor to be asked to be a panelist here at the World Knowledge Forum. Um, I was asked to talk about this paradigm change that's going to happen to the automotive industry. Uh, and the real question that I have today is, when will it occur? It certainly is going to occur. Nobody argues about that. The question is when. Uh, and, and a fully autonomous car, we'll have to be careful about defining. There, there's various definitions. And I want to use the extreme definition, which is that there is no human involvement at all. No steering wheel, no brakes. You get in the car, you tell it where to go, it takes you where you want to go. That's a fully autonomous vehicle. There are lots of, of um, technologies back of that where the human is still in charge, driver assist systems, uh, adaptive cruise control, and others that we'll talk about. But the real question about this paradigm shift uh, is when will the fully autonomous car come to us? When it does come to us, there's going to be a huge paradigm shift. We no longer, uh, we have to start thinking about how we're going to entertain the driver. Do we provide beds in the car? Do we put bars in there? Do we put, what, what, do, you, what do you do in designing this vehicle? So it, business is going to change terribly fast once it happens. My issue is, is, is this going to occur as a revolution or as an evolution? I think you'll see that my opinion, and I think the opinion of many people, is that this is an evolutionary change, not a revolutionary change. I don't think the industry has to worry about this paradigm shift. It's occurring now as we speak. There are more and more of these active safety systems occurring on vehicles every day. Every time you go buy a car, there's more of them. And this is moving us toward the fully autonomous car. So if I can figure out how to work this. So there are some, some questions here. I may, I may have to put my glasses on to read this. That I, I'm, I'm not only going to give the question, but I'm going to give the answer too. Or at least I'm going to give my answer. And the first one is, will self-driving cars cause a paradigm shift in the automotive industry? Of course it will. You no longer, you no longer make cars as they are. Uh, they'll be totally different. We have to build and design different things. It'll change everything. But the question is, when will it happen? I feel it'll happen a long time in the future. The second is, is will it be a disruptive technology? A disruptive technology is one that changes how people live. It changes what manufacturers do, and it disrupts things. Examples of disruptive technologies are the Industrial Revolution. You can read them here. All of these things change completely how we live our daily lives. Will driverless cars do that? I say, yes, it will. Will fully autonomous cars occur in the near term, say two to five years? I say no, it, it cannot occur in that period of time. I know the companies, Google and others will say, and the technology is so close, it's just really tempting. Uh, there's, there's just, it's just not there. I used the example the other day of when will you feel comfortable sending this autonomous car to pick up your daughter at school with no human there at all? So you send off the vehicle, goes through the city, it goes through the suburb, picks up your daughter, and then brings her back home. Is that going to happen in two to five years? I don't think so. Uh, will automated subsystems keep increasing in number and reducing in price? Yes, of course it will. We see that happening today. And now, when you, when you mention all these systems, you really have to make more space. Adaptive cruise control, emergency braking, lane keeping, lane departure warner, lane, lane change warning and control, rear collision avoidance, automated parking, valet parking. You just keep going on and on. These are all active safety systems which will make up an autonomous car, but these are all subsystems that presume it's helping the human. It's not replacing the human, it is helping it. Will fully autonomous self-driving cars be on the road in the next 50 years? I think we can comfortably say yes. Certainly, if you define the road, and I, I put quotations around road, and the road is being maybe starting off with a limited thing, a campus, a medical facility, a college campus, an industrial park, where we can guarantee the speeds of the vehicles, we can guarantee what type of vehicles, that will certainly happen, and that, that can happen today. The technology for campus type of vehicles can happen today. And, and will self-driving car technology be revolutionary? Evolutionary, I think I've already put my cards on the table for that. What I have spending most of my time on in the last five to 10 years have been semi-autonomous systems. And the question is the humor. Now, if you have a clown like this human there, I don't know if you can see it from there, but he's got earphones in his ear, he's got coffee, he's got video, he's, he's very occupied. So we'd like to make the vehicle safe for that guy. If we can make the vehicle really safe for that guy, 
then we can probably be very close to the fully autonomous system. So the vehicle has to have control systems, it has to have sensors, it has to know about the environment, it also has to know about the human. Now eventually we'll say, well, I don't need to worry about the human because the human's asleep in the back seat. Today we have to worry about him. I have to know, is he able to take over in the case of an emergency? And we've been looking at, and I think a lot of the automotive manufacturers have as well, of this intervention technology. As long as the human is there, the technology has to make an assessment. Is there a threat to this vehicle and human? If there is a threat, is the human capable of, of taking care of it? If he's not capable of taking care of it, then we're gonna to have to intervene. So you can see all these modules here. There's a threat assessment module. It has to know things about the driver. It uh, has to know things about the environment and the vehicle. If there is a threat, it has to make a decision of whether the human is in shape to actually uh, take care of that threat. If he's not able to take care of it in time, then the intervention model has to intervene and, and save the vehicle. So this, this is the type of technology which I think in the next five to 10 years is gonna be developing very, very rapidly. And when this problem is fully solved, 99.999% of all cases, then we're ready to, to go to the autonomous vehicle. But the next slides I'm showing are, are prepared by Dr. Herman Winner at the Technical University of Darmstadt. He gave a seminar at Berkeley about three or four weeks ago, and I, I liked his slides too much. He lent them to me, or some of his slides. So I'm not, I don't want to take credit for these slides. The, the, the first uh, question was, what is autonomous driving vehicle? If you two of you get off and start talking, you'll find out very quickly you're talking about something very different. And again, I'm talking about a fully autonomous vehicle that has no need for a human whatsoever. But people refer to things like autonomous valet parking, interstate pilots, full automation, which is going through urban and suburban areas, uh, vehicle on demand taxi service, Uber would love to have it that didn't need a driver, it just calls a automated vehicle to come pick people up. So everybody uses different technology. This slide I think is kind of interesting because it sets the stage for, we're gonna have to guarantee things about these robotic vehicles, robotically controlled vehicles, what a fully autonomous vehicle is. Now today when we certify a vehicle, and that's in green down here, you can see that we're certifying the vehicle. It's got steering, it's got braking, acceleration, uh, and we certify that it's a safe vehicle and so forth. It doesn't, today's approval process doesn't uh, take into account anything in the yellow. On the left over here, you have the driver, which is pretty complicated. He's got navigation, guidance, stabilization. He uses knowledge-based, rule-based, skill-based behavior. But that's not part of, the, part of the approval process. When a vehicle gets approved, it's the technology of the vehicle. The driver has to be, you know, has to go through and get a driver's license and so forth, but that's not part of the vehicle certification. That's gonna all change now because now we gotta move everything from the left side of this yellow box to the right side of the yellow box, and we're gonna have to certify it. It's now part of the vehicle. It may be a robot, of course, it's not a mechanical robot, turning the steering wheel, but basically it's, it's technology, sensors, actuators, acting as if it was a robot, and we have to certify that. And the question is, how do you certify that? We've had 100 years. I can tell you exactly what the average, uh, what average driver does, the average human. We have 100 years of data. We know exactly how many hundreds of millions of driver miles per fatality. We have so many statistics that we could fill books with it. We have nothing yet except a few thousands of miles of a Google car to really say what a driverless vehicle will do. Uh, we're gonna have to do that. We're gonna have to come up with ways to try to do that before we really allow these vehicles. You have to guarantee that this vehicle is safer, try and guarantee the vehicle is safer or at least as safe as a human-driven vehicle. How do you do that? We have no data, no test, no nothing. So what the next two plus sides are saying is we gotta somehow figure out how to test these autonomous vehicles. If a company thinks they've got a vehicle that's fully autonomous, then we need to think of worst case tests, identify critical situations. How much is the environmental influence on perception? Our, our robots now have perception abilities with artificial intelligence and computer science technology. How robust is that to bad weather, uh, to, to uh, dust storms and so forth? 
it's pretty clear that to certify these vehicles, we're going to have to use simulation. We don't have 100 years and 100 million test miles to put on these robotic cars. So we're going to have to certify them with far less testing. And that has to be done with, with a lot of simulation as well as hard, hardware testing as well. So the question is, how do we go about getting this, this knowledge now of robotic vehicles? How do, how do we go about doing that? We've got to get databases. We have to establish cases. We want to make as much of this virtual assessment as possible. We've got to make sure that people believe our simulation models because we're verifying the safety of the vehicle with a large extent simulation models. And we need to generate statistical data. So how do we do this? And I, I, I think this, again, is a nice diagram. And, and what Professor Winter said was that we really need to think of this evolution triangle. So we have a triangle, and we have to move into the center of this before we get fully autonomous driving. Uh, on the right-hand side, we have low-speed technology, like automatic, autonomous valet parking. That we can do in a controlled environment. We have simple scenarios in the green, such as adaptive cruise control, lane keeping support. Highway driving is really fairly simple, unless the terrible thing happens. The real problem area is the red over here, the high risk area, emergency assist, collision avoidance by evading collision mitigation. Somehow we gotta set up some scenarios that we move into the center of the triangle. Somehow we have to be able to set up test scenarios to verify the vehicles. I have heard very little talk about how do we verify the safety of robotic vehicles. Nobody talks about it. Somehow we have to set up scenarios that we can get into the center here and test simple scenarios, high risk scenarios, as well as low risk. So let me go on here and just talk about my conclusions on this. The safety promise of autonomous vehicles cannot be approved before introduction. So we can't wait 100 years to use autonomous vehicles. So we have to use some of the techniques I've been talking about. Testing and qualification are the key issues for development. Uh, what we should do in here, and again, you can read this as well as I am, is introduce these active safety systems into the market one at a time, exactly what's happening now. Hyundai is one of the leaders in, in, in this area. Introduce more and more and more of these active safety systems, make them cheaper and cheaper, so we can start to do real testing on robot-like vehicle. Thank you very much. The World Knowledge Forum.